It's a classic game that introduced many of us to this hobby, but for those of you who have yet to try Catan, here's a video on how to play on Legendary Tactics. So we're going to make use of the tutorial provided on Board Game Arena by Nekon Yancer. Um, and this won't take too long, it's a pretty succinct uh, tutorial. Um, the goal of the game is to get to 10 points, and you score points for building settlements, which are like the little houses, uh, cities, which are the bigger uh, houses, uh, roads, which are the little sticks, and other developments. So um, there's various different types of terrain. You can see there's uh, hills in, uh, in red, they provide brick. A forest in the dark green pr produces lumber. Mountains in gray produce ore. Uh, fields, which are the yellow uh, spaces, produce grain. The light green spaces are pasture, which produce uh, sheep or wool. And the desert, which uh, you'll see this uh, dark token in the robber, uh, that produces nothing. So essentially it's the, the only dead square on the entire board. And this board is typically randomized every game and including the numbers that are found on each uh, hex. So the number tiles that are there uh, essentially mean that any any uh, players that has a that have a neighboring settlement or city can collect resources um, according to the roll of a, of two dice. So you roll two dice. If you roll uh, a three and you happen to be on this uh, uh, this spot here, then you'll get a brick. If you have one settlement, you get one supply uh, of uh, resource per settlement and two per city. Um, so you can. Grab some ore if there's a roll of 10 and you happen to be next to it. Now you'll notice there are uh, some numbers which are uh, doubled up, uh, like 10s, for example, 11s. Um, there's only one 12 and one 2, though. And the ones that are highlighted in red are the 8 and the 6s are the ones that are most likely to be rolled. So those are your prime territories. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is to place a settlement. This is at the beginning of the game. Um, we'll place a settlement uh, right here, and you can see that little house uh, uh, being placed. And this is part of the setup. You place a settlement and a road. And uh, so we're going to place right on that eight. Um, and the four and the five are not bad. Uh, so uh, that gives us, uh, you know, a lumber or wood whenever eight is rolled, a grain whenever five is rolled, and brick whenever four is rolled. Okay, so good, pretty good coverage. Um, obviously, you want to be in next two areas where uh, the, the the die rolls are going to be rolled more often, so you get more resources. Um, as far as the statistics go, if you look, there's also um, little dots uh, here. Uh, you can see the uh, the the eight has uh, five dots. There's four dots on the five. Uh, and so forth, uh, three dots on the four. That gives you an idea as to the odds of success. So in general, you want to pick the ones that have the higher number of dots. Now, by placing the settlement, even in the beginning, we get a uh, victory point. So essentially, we start, even though we're, our goal is 10, we actually, um, we start with two, as you'll see. And we're going to place a road. So again, we get to place a, a settlement and a road. And then our opponents do the same. And uh, settlements go in the corners of the tiles, you'll notice, and roads go along their sides. And you can't place uh, settlements uh, next door. There has to be at least two road segments in between. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. You can do some interesting blocking maneuvers, as my opponent is looking to do right here. Um, and my opponents place uh, their settlement and their road. Uh, then for the second settlement, um, the person who played last goes first for the uh, the second round of placement. So um, as it says here, the placement order is reversed. So player one goes first, player two, player three, then player three goes again, then player two, then player one. And that's to balance out the advantage of going first uh, in this uh, in this part of the game. So uh, white places and then blue will place next. I'm grabbing that... Uh, very nice looking wheat, uh, the grain uh, field there. Now we can place our second settlement uh, anywhere, but because, uh, as I said, you can't have two settlements one space apart. So the, the ones that are highlighted in blue are not eligible for placement. Okay, so we will place the second settlement here so we can get close to this field for the, the, the wool, and uh, we'll place the road 
here. Why? Because the tutorial di <laughs> dictates that I should. Um, anyway, uh, so the uh, uh, that's the basic uh, setup, and we're ready to start. And basically, there's four parts to every turn. First of all, the player whose turn it is rolls the dice. Uh, resources are collected based on that roll. Then uh, tr resources are traded with other players. Once the trading is done, then you can build, uh, if able, and uh, play any development cards that you have. Development cards are essentially bonus cards that you you buy. So, um, and as, as it says here, trading and building can be done as little or as much as you like. Um, so we're going to roll our dice. And we get a three. So that means that the threes there are going to collect resources. So we managed to uh, get a grain because we happened to have a settlement on that tile um, when the three was was rolled. Uh, no one else uh, was next to the uh, next to the the uh, the brick tile, so there was no resource collected by anyone. So we are we're in good shape there. Now, just in terms of the uh, the resources, I forgot to mention that you you get. Uh, uh, one of the you get some starting resources based on where you place your last settlement. So we placed our second settlement on this uh, here with the pasture, the uh, the mountain, and the field. So we got one sheep, one ore, and one grain in our hand. After the roll, we got a uh, second grain, and so we're going to use that. We could use that to to trade and to initiate a trade. You in this um, interface, you click on. The trade button, but uh, we don't really need to trade right now. In the in real life, you would just be putting it out there. Hey, I got two grain. <laughs> two grain. What what will you give me for it? Or any sort of negotiation that you like. Um, now, there's four things that we can build. If you look here, the, there's the road, which uh, costs one wood and one brick. Uh, it doesn't give us any victory points, but it can do in building the longest road, which we'll touch on. Uh, settlements give one victory point each, provided they're spaced to two uh, intersections apart, and they cost one of each resource. So one of wood, brick, wool, and grain. The city costs two grain and three ore, and they're worth two victory points each. They don't get built on their own. They get upgraded. Uh, you get an upgrade from uh, a settlement to a city. Uh, the development card is one wool, one uh, wheat, and one ore. And that gives you, depending on the card, it can give you some victory points. But um, anyway, those are the, th the things that you can uh, buy. So um, now the one thing we can uh, buy or build here is a development card. So we're going to uh, purchase that by uh, clicking on buy development card. And we got a knight. Now a knight is initially it's played face down. Um, we can't play it right now. Because um, we can never play a development card on the on the turn that we buy it, but um, the knight is uh, is great to we can move the robber, which will again sh I'll, I'll get into more detail on that, and you can st essentially steal a resource from the owner of the uh, tile next to where you place the robber. Um, the development cards are mostly knight cards. Uh, Almost a bit over half of them are night cards. There's also uh, two cards that allow you to build roads for free, uh, two road segments. There's a card, two cards that are called Year of Plenty, and those are essentially uh, where you can draw any two resource cards you like from the bank. There's one, there's two Monopoly cards where you claim a resource. You say I, I declare a monopoly on brick and every player in the game has to give you all of the brick that they have in their hand it's a very nasty card when it comes up sometimes and there are five cards in there that are just pure victory points you don't need to reveal them at the at the time that you uh you get them and the reason for that is obviously sometimes you want to uh keep that secret if uh, other players know that you have victory points they might try and uh to block you and, and uh, prevent you from winning because you'll have an advantage. Anyway, um, so there's nothing else to do for this turn. We're going to pass and my opponents go, they roll the dice. And again, the, the resources are collected by all. So you'll see that uh, both Nekonyancer and uh, uh, Neko, <laughs> Neko, Neko, Neko uh, got uh, some resources there. So the resources are based purely on uh, who is adjacent to the uh, spaces that are rolled. So there's no, um, you know, there's, there's, it doesn't matter who rolls the dice, everyone collects. Now the roll seven has happened, so the blue player rolled it, 
And when a seven is rolled, there are two things that happen. Number one, anyone with eight or more cards in their hand must immediately choose and discard half rounded down. So if you have nine cards, you have to discard four. And that's that can be a, an issue because sometimes you're collecting a lot of resources. Uh, this doesn't apply for development cards, by the way. But it, with resource cards in hand, sometimes you end up with a lot of them and uh, sometimes you, you have more than uh, eight uh, or sorry, more than seven, sorry, I should say. And so you need to discard half of them. And then the player that rolled the seven now gets to move the robber to a new tile and steal a resource from another player. So the robber moved to this uh, space. And again, that does two things. Number one, it blocks the tile. So if a nine is rolled, that tile does not generate any resources. Um, the other thing is that the, the player blue has a, a one-time opportunity to steal a random resource card from a player who has a settlement on that on that tile, which happens to be us, and our brick is stolen uh, randomly uh, from our our hand, so that's not very nice. So we'll we'll see what we can do to to get uh, get them back. Now, we um, or sorry, the the white player rolls a seven again and steals an ore from us, so we are getting uh, really uh, taken advantage of here. Um, but uh, and now the the eight tile the wood tile here is blocked so hopefully we can um, <clears throat> get a seven here and we don't we get a five but that's okay um, we collect uh, some some grain and uh, so we can use the knight now to um, essentially move the robber and to steal a resource from someone else so we're going to move it over here to block this uh, this ore space um, and we're going to steal. Um, from uh, blue and so we steal a wood that's great we needed a, a wood uh, potentially to build a road so that's great now we got one uh, wood the knight card stays with you as part of the army and if you have uh, the largest army uh, after three knights as long as you have the most knights down of any player you will get a special two-point reward for having the largest army um, however if anyone uh, outpaces you in the number of knights that uh, you have flipped up then they can steal that two point bonus from you so it's something you have to fight for so we're being asked uh, to trade oh and there was that went uh, really quickly there but um, anyway we're going to click on uh, on trade and uh, we're going to be able to offer different trades uh, here so we're going to say hey we'll trade you this wheat for some brick we're going to propose the deal and uh, they counter now again this is for the purpose of the tutorial um, Nick on answer proposes uh, and says no I won't give you one brick for one grain I'll give you two wood a brick a sheep and two ore for your grain <laughs> so again for the purposes of the, of the tutorial so we obviously won that trade uh, in a big way so now we're going to try a different trade and we're going to offer one wood for two ore and you just click on one what you want to give and click on two that you want to or click on the ones you want to receive and propose the deal and uh, we get an answer that uh, that the player uh, accepted the trade so now we can uh, do some uh, some building so we're going to do uh, we're going to build a road right here and it's going to cost one wood and one brick and there we go that's perfect uh, now we can also build a settlement because we happen to have one uh, wood, one sheep, one uh, grain. But wait, we don't have enough brick. If you look at the cost, the second icon over is a brick. Now we could do something called maritime trading, which uh, allows you to at any time you can trade four of the same resource for the to the bank for one resource of your choice. It's not a great deal, obviously but it is sometimes you got to do what you got to do and so we're going to trade one four ore for one uh, brick in a maritime trade and that gives us enough to build our settlement perfect so we're going to build and uh, we're going to click uh, here to place the settlement and there we go and we also get a victory point for that now there are some um, now this also gives us access to this 10 uh, lumber tile and if an 8 is rolled we actually draw double because we've got two settlements there so that's an 8 is a very good roll for us um, but it also connects us with this port 
Okay, so you see this port, it says three to one. So now instead of trading four to one, we can do maritime trading for three for one. And there's some here you can see uh, the, the ports here with uh, specific goods on them. So you can uh, trade two wood for any other trade good or trade two brick. So that can be very handy if you have, for example, a, a good uh, generator of resources as we have with our eight. You can see if we're generating a lot of wood, we may want to grab that this maritime port here because it can mean that we can trade two for one to get whatever good we happen to need at that moment. So it can be very uh, useful. Um, so that is a, a good thing. So we're going to pass now. We're all done. And uh, we're almost done the tutorial as well. We'll just uh, take up a few more uh, details. The six is rolled. We get uh, some wool from that, which is great. Um, and uh, normally there'd be trading and building and so forth, but uh, we're our, our AI opponents are whipping through the, uh, the simulation. Now, you can see the city was actually right, uh, right there. Uh, the white player just used uh, three ore and two grain to upgrade a settlement to a city, which gains one victory point. And again, cities draw twice as much as settlements. So when a nine is rolled uh, here, then uh, uh, neko, neko, neko 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 four <laughs> will draw two uh, ore whenever that nine is uh, is rolled. So that's a, a good thing. Or on the 11, uh, draw uh, two sheep from that, uh, or sorry, three sheep because of the additional settlement there. So that if an 11 is rolled, that's a lot of uh, sheep as a resource. Um, and the longest road, which we mentioned before, um, if you build a road that is continuous um, and made up of at least five segments, you get the longest road bonus worth two points. But just like the, uh, the largest army bonus, this bonus can be stolen if someone else be, builds an even longer road. So if you build a, a road uh, with length five, that's great. But if your opponent uh, builds one that's six uh, in length, then they take that those two bonus points away. So um, largest army and large, longest road are the two uh, areas where you're going to be com in constant competition to stay ahead. Um, now, currently, the longest road is two. You can see over here, if you're playing on Board Game Arena, there's a status uh, box here where it says uh, number of resource cards in hand, number of development cards in hand. That means face down or uh, uh, unable, uh, un unviewable by your opponents. And you also have uh, the longest road here. So we, we have the longest road, but it's not long enough yet to qualify for that uh, bonus. And then uh, the army size is also there and available uh, remaining cities and roads and uh, settlements in stock as well as our victory points which are represented with a little star beside it so um, so that's basically all you need to know other than the victory point uh, thing we'll just confirm that so settlements are worth one victory point each cities are worth two victory points each there are some development cards there's five in the deck worth one each longest road is worth two largest army is worth two and that's basically all you need to know to play Settlers of Catan. And I know this is a game that's been around a long time. There are other tutorials out there. I thank you so much for watching ours, and I hope this was helpful to you in teaching you how to play in just a few minutes. Take care. We'll see you next time on Legendary Tactics.